Hi and welcome. So in this video we are going to run through uh, configuring SVSAN to make that trust relationship uh, with Stormagic's SVKMS key management server in order to be enabled in order to enable uh, SVSAN encryption effectively, a, a volume-based encryption rather than needing to do it per virtual machine, per file or other methods. So we can see up on the screen I have here our SVKMS cluster and I'm just going to log in to this guy. And in the same vein as when we in a previous video created uh, that trust relationship between vCenter and this example we can create groups and we're going to create our svsan uh, user um, that we will generate a certificate for uh, to generate the certificate and, and put it on the uh, vsas as it were So first we come along and create our user and he's going to be a key access user. We could do this per appliance and have a separate certificate for each of them or you could use the same certificate for, for all of them, whatever is your uh, preferred approach, whatever is your preferred security policy. Now, I mean, the main thing here being, you know, all about the uh, separation of the lock and the key, the architecture that we could have that SVKMS in the same environment, you know, separated off on some separate storage, separated on a different box in another room. Uh, but, but by preference, you separate the lock and the key is essentially the principle. So as again, you know, a, an example uh, use case, there's a customer that uses SVKMS to encrypt their edge sites, about 300 pharmacy locations. Uh, and then they also use that same SVKMS cluster that's hosted up in their main data center alongside vCenter to do some VMware encryption uh, alongside um, vCenter, vSAN and everything else as well. Okay. Uh, so here we can see we are going to authenticate via our client cert and we create that user and we can then download that certificate as a, as a PEM file. So that's the SVKMS side of things completed. And if we come over to SVSAN, what we can then do is to configure it to be able to talk to uh, that KMS cluster, as it were. So first we can put in our uh, host name, um, oops, our name of the cluster, and our IPs, and obviously we can then put in here an alternate as well. Uh, the nice thing there is that that, that cluster could obviously be two independent IPs in different data centers, for example, talking to each other. Uh, we can then come in and from our downloads location, find that pen file and apply. Uh, we can then do the same to our other uh, SVSAN appliance in the same uh, pair in that same location. And with that done, we can then come over to our storage. We, we could create new storage volumes and that will automatically grab those keys and encrypt. Uh, but also then we can live encrypt uh, storage volumes as well, non-disruptively. Uh, as we can see, it will now do this as a background operation. It's now making the call out to the KMS in order to be able to request the keys and be there you know, doing that live encryption as a low priority, low IO item. So it's not impacting that front end performance, uh, but encrypting there in the background with an ETA to completion as well. Now here we can see the key IDs uh, displayed. You can see there's two of those in order to be able to have a 512 bit um, key that's actually used to encrypt the volume. And, and it's a per volume uh, encryption per mirror effectively. And with that, it's that simple. That means uh, that any VMs on top of that data store are automatically encrypted. So the benefit there being that certain VMs, you're not worrying from an operational overhead or management uh, if anything gets missed. Even more so on a granular level, the, the 
in fact, been true for, for files as well, for, you know, if you're looking to encrypt specific files. Uh, the benefit here, you just throw it on the storage, you don't have to worry, you know that that data is, uh, is all secure. Uh, the failure scenarios with this, again, in the same vein as um, VMware encryption, uh, the two are obviously there chatting live. What's happening is, is the appliances hold those keys in volatile memory. So that should connectivity to the KMS disappear, obviously the storage all stays online, but it is volatile, with the principle being that one of those servers gets stolen, it loses power, the keys get lost, obviously then needs to re-get them, it's unable to chat to that KMS, so the volume stays locked. So within our SVSAN Evaluators Guide, there's, there's some great detail in there. Uh, about perhaps proving some of those things out uh, by, you know, obviously doing your deletes and rekeys and everything else, but also then, you know, nose up and down and, and things like that, being able to re-get the key, not being able to re-get the key, and the different states, uh, such as de de uh, degraded, remote, locked, uh, if, a, if a remote site is unable then to you know, communicate to the KMS, for example, on reboot. All right. Well, I hope this has been informative for you. Thank you very much for watching. And as ever, you know, any questions, uh, the technical services team is happy to help out. Thanks very much.